How do you find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function? Well, really to find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function, there's one step. Form the inverse by interchanging the x and the y variables. Uh, so of course before you do that you would want to take the function notation, f of x notation, and replace it with y. And once you interchange the x and the y variables, to get this in function form, you'd want to solve the equation for y. And then, uh, once you have it solved for y, replace the y with the inverse function notation, f inverse of x. So if you have just some simple points that you want to find the function of, uh, given the function, find the inverse. Uh, all you have to do is interchange the x and the y. Just uh, take the point negative 9, negative 8, and rewrite it as negative 8, negative 9. Uh, interchange the x and the y uh, values, negative 7, 7 becomes 7, negative 7, and 8, negative 3 becomes negative 3, 8. Uh, given the function f, find f inverse. f of x equals 4x minus 5. Here you'd start by uh, replacing the f of x with y. You get y equals 4x minus 5. And then form the inverse by interchanging the x and the y variables. So y becomes x, x becomes y. You get x equals 4y minus 5. Solve the equation for y. So I'm going to uh, add 5 to each side. Gives me x plus 5 is equal to 4y. And then divide by 4. And you get x plus 5 all over 4 equals y. Of course, if you wanted to, you could have divided each term by 4 to get 1 fourth x plus 5 fourths equals y. And that's uh, just as good. Uh, and then finally, replace the y with f inverse uh, notation. You get f inverse of x is equal to x plus 5 divided by 4. That's your inverse. Okay, example 8. Given a function, uh, find the inverse, graph both the function and the inverse on the same axes and give the domain and range of f and f inverse. So here we have a cubic function f of x equals x to the third minus 1. To find the inverse replace the f, in, f of x notation with y. y equals x to the third minus 1. Form the inverse by interchanging x and y variables. So you get x equals y to the third minus 1. Solve the equation for y uh, by adding 1 to each side. You get x plus 1 equals y to the third. And then to undo the cube, take the cube root. You get the cube root of x plus 1 is equal to y. That's, that's your inverse, and you would write it in inverse function notation. f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 1. So to graph the functions, we know that uh, y equals x to the third minus 1 is our cubic function shifted one unit down. So that curve is at the point 0, negative 1. The cube root function has the same type of curve, opening, uh, uh, increasing to the right. And this x plus 1 underneath the cube root symbol tells you to shift to the left one. So the turn is at negative 1, 0. And you can see that these are inverses or they're reflections about the line y equals x. Now find the domain and range of f and f inverse because a cubic function has a domain and range of all real numbers. The inverse will also have a domain and range of all real numbers. Okay, uh, 
An organization determines the cost per person of chartering a bus is given by the formula C of X equals 400 plus 6X over X, where X is the number of people in the group and C of X is in dollars. So what does C inverse of 19 represent? So, so remember that to get the inverse you interchange the uh, input and the output. For C of X, the input is the number of people in the group and the output is the cost per person of chartering a bus. So if you take the inverse, then the input 19 is going to be the cost per person chartering a bus. You'd be asking when the cost is $19 per person, then how many people would be on the bus? So the output of C inverse of 19 would be the number of people in the uh, group. So again, 19 would be the 19 is the cost per person, and then C inverse of 19 is the number of people that can travel at a cost of $19 per person.